President Putin is first and foremost a, an opportunist. And, and those troops in, in the Baltic states that have been there since about 2015 are, are to make really clear to President Putin there is no opportunity there. Let me ask you ask you about a story which is, or rather, a, a place which is back in the headlines. We're, we're seeing now in last in recent hours how Ukraine is launching a, a number of attacks on Snake Island. Now, we all remember Snake Island rose to great prominence in all of our, our awareness at the very early part of this latest uh, phase of the Ukraine uh, conflict when there were uh, there was a Russian warship, we remember this, off off the the island, wanted to take the island, invited the Ukrainian soldiers to surrender, and they told the warship. I think they said, well, in 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 their own language, "F you," and it was a symbol of a symbol of defiance by the by the Ukrainians. And now Ukrainians are attacking to take back Snake Island. Just your thoughts, then, if you can, on the context here, the importance of Snake Island strategically, but also symbolic importance too, because it has that too. Yes, I mean those reports coming in about the the attack on the Snake Island. I mean, firstly, I mean it won't it won't be easy, um, uh, a, a kind of a, an assault like that. But but as you say, it's so symbolic, isn't it? You know what what I think the Ukrainians have been very good at doing throughout this conflict is humiliating uh, the Russians at the strategic level, but also right down on the ground. Whether that is use of social media, TikTok stories. Uh, as you say, those, those uh, defenders of, of Snake Island using uh, pretty colourful language to uh, demonstrate their disdain for, for, the, for the Russians. Uh, and so Snake Island does have very, very important, significant, uh, symbolic uh, resonance to them. Yeah, I mean, there were T-shirts that could be seen around Ukraine of uh, of Snake Island with, with its message of defiance to the Russians all, all over it. Street signs referring to, to Snake Island. Uh, in, in, in conflicts... Rupert, it's true, isn't it, that sometimes a a, a, a fight or a, 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 an issue can have greater importance, even though it has little strategic importance. I think Snake Island does have strategic importance, by the way, but the symbolic importance of a thing can make it very important militarily. Oh, you, you, you're so right, John. You know, you've got to have a rallying call, haven't you? And um, and we can think of lots of instances in, in, of that through through war. Yeah, hey, yeah, we've just we've just had the 40th anniversary of the Falklands, where you know uh, the Battle of Goose Green. Lots to talk about that, but that but that was about um, morale and momentum and and getting a getting a win to set the tone for the campaign. Uh, and and the same for the Ukrainians. You know, so President Zelensky himself is is the arch rallying call. The defense of Mariupol, Snake Island, the you know the 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 manner in which the Ukrainian troops have been fighting, they they all create a symbolism, and they almost cr- generate the, their own myth, and, and it's vital you know to to keep morale up in, in the tough times. Um, yeah, while we're talking about symbolism, it seems that a a Russian navy vessel, it's a it's a Russian navy target, it seems, was sunk by a a, a harpoon missile supplied by European allies. Now, obviously, those. These, these munitions supplied by European friends are crucially important to the war effort of the of the Ukrainian military, but also the fact that they are supplied by uh, by foreign supporters and allies that is important. The use of a harpoon to sink a Russian vessel that also sends a message, doesn't it? Which the Ukrainians are very keen to spread. They have their friends, and their friends are helping. They're not alone. Yes, yeah, so, and, and I think it allows them to point to the fact that hey, look, we've got some of the best technology uh, available. Uh, I know, by the way, Russia, in many cases, their technology is, is not as good. They may have a lot of it. Um, but but also it becomes a rallying call in terms of, look, the world is unified against you, President Putin. Now, of course, that's not quite as clear cut, clear cut as that. But, but President Zelensky throughout has tried to demonstrate... Um, uh, the the coalition that is that is backing him, NATO and others, and and so those those weapons are manifestation of that. Let's talk for a moment about that that coalition because in recent days we've been discussing the importance of Kaliningrad, the uh, the Russian the Russian exclave, as it were, not part of the Russian mainland. It's separated by uh, Poland and Lith- Lithuania, and Lithuania, in line with the EU sanctions, has been interrupting train traffic into that Russian enclave. It's infuriated the Russians. Um, Allies have said, remember, look, Lithuania is a part of NATO, and Russia has reacted to the point of saying, this is the foreign ministry in Moscow, to stop talking about Article 5. Now, when they say Article 5, that, of course, is the pledge of mutual defence by NATO NATO members. So your thoughts on that, the way the 
the rhetorical uh, debate, the rhetorical battles developing? Because it is important that, that we do keep on talking about Article 5, isn't it? It, it is, it's the ultimate sanction, isn't it? Um, and I, I completely agree with you. You know, what Lithuania are doing is entirely uh, as you would expect them to do. You know, they're, they're enforcing uh, EU sanctions. And, you know, the three Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, are a very interesting case case in point. Um, firstly, we've work, work, worked a lot with some of them, the Estonians in particular, in, in Afghanistan. Um, but they are, they are, they are great and powerful NATO members. And it, it was interesting, you know, after after Crimea in 2014, uh, NATO put forces up into those into those three Baltic states. In the case of the British, we put a battle group uh, up into a, Estonia. And, and the message was saying, look, if you think, President Putin, you could be so bold as to put a step into Estonia, you might think you can get away with that. But can you, if there's a British troop there, there's a Canadian there, there's a German there, there's an American there, you, President Putin is first and foremost a, an opportunist. And, and those troops in, in the Baltic states, that as I say, have been there since about 2015, are, are to make really clear to President Putin, there is no opportunity there. Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, politics is is a big part of strategy, as as, as is military operation. And so I wanted to, to you as a strategist, how important is it that the door is shown to be open at some point down the line to Ukraine as a member of the European Union? Because it's not going to happen. That membership is not going to happen anytime soon, is it? But it sends a message that the doors are open. Yes, I think so. Um, I mean, one, one could argue that before... Uh, Russia invaded Ukraine, um, one, one could have run some of the dialogue dif differently. Um, but the second that Putin invaded um, Ukraine, all bets are off. And, and uh, at one level, of course, you want uh, President Putin to find, out, find himself a way out of this. But you have to go with a full court press against Russia. And that is what the Western community have done very well with sanctions, uh, with, you know, you know, we're about to start Wimbledon with not allowing Russian players to play at Wimbledon, for example. You, you have to draw a line. Uh, uh, and, and I think that's been done very effectively. Good to talk to you, Rupert. Thanks, sir. And thanks for joining us as usual. That is Major, G Major General Rupert Jones, former Standing Joint Force Commander, joining us in the briefing room. Mm -hmm.